Fall of 2024 is finally here and winter is fast approaching. That means we can finally start wearing our awesome boots that have just been sitting on the shelf collecting dust all summer. So today we're going over my boot collection for this fall and winter, which seems to be shrinking as the years go by, as well as some tips and tricks that you can use when you're out there shopping for boots. That way you can end up with the perfect pair. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. First up, the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill Brown Chrome XL Standard non-waterproof boot. I purchased this boot for $250 way back in 2016. It has been rehealed once, it has been resold once. The boot is still going strong. An absolutely amazing boot and quite possibly the best shoe purchase that I've made of all time. Likes about this boot. Well, it's the perfect mixture and it sits right in the middle of a super dressy work boot and a super casual, rugged, workwear inspired boot. The shape is wide. The toe box is not big and bulbous right there. You could definitely tell it's not as sleek as a dress shoe or a dress boot, but it is by no means bulky. You can definitely dress this one up all the way up to a casual suit. It maintains that shine, no problem. That brown Chrome XL leather really does look quite a bit more formal and quite a bit more refined than something, let's say, like the Red Wing Iron Ranger or the Wolverine 1000 Mile. And with that day-night rubber outsole, you get awesome weather resistance, awesome traction, and also the shoe doesn't look like it's super bulky down here, like a big bulky hiking shoe. Now this boot is also super comfortable. About two or three years after I purchased the Higgins Mill, I ended up spending a full day for Thanksgiving with my then girlfriend, now wife, and we walked around the Long Island City area of Queens, and then we took the train down to Greenpoint, Brooklyn, just to have Thanksgiving dinner with our families. At the end of the day, I clocked walking 10 miles in this boot, and my feet were feeling actually pretty good. The heel could have been a little bit better, but overall, nine out of 10, as far as comfort goes, my feet were feeling absolutely awesome. Dislikes about this boot. Well, the boot tends to run very, very hot. My first winter, I was wearing them a lot since I had a job as an IT field engineer in New York City, in Manhattan. So I was wearing these, walking around in the rain, in the snow, in the super cold weather. But every time I got back to my office, my feet would overheat to the point where I actually started to take the boots off if I knew that I was gonna sit there for longer than, let's say, 10 or 20 minutes. And this wasn't even with super warm wool socks. I was wearing basic cotton Bomba socks at the time. And that really had me questioning wearing them in the fall or the spring. They pretty much were only a winter boot since they ran so hot for me. Now, while they are very comfortable, the boots are still pretty heavy and they don't have a lot of heel cushions. So anytime I was walking more than five miles, my heels would get a bit sore. That Thanksgiving day where I walked 10 miles, I wasn't just walking 10 miles straight. I would walk half a mile, sit down, walk a mile, sit down. We were just spending all day outside walking, sitting at a cafe, walking, sitting to get lunch. But even at the end of the day, my heels did start to feel just a little bit sore. So while they were mostly comfortable, if I had a day where I knew I'd be walking nonstop, I would hesitate to put these on over something else. So if you don't have a car, you live in a city, or you do all of your errands on foot, just beware you make it a sore heel if you wear a boot like this. Finally, that Chrome XL leather. While it doesn't require any maintenance, it stays shined up, you don't really have to condition it that much, it does wrinkle pretty severely. That's the characteristics of the Chrome XL leather. However, I don't really like when I have super deep set wrinkles in my shoes or boots. Here is this one. The left one, a little bit better for some reason. This actually is pretty acceptable, but the one I showed you on the right, it's just a little bit too wrinkly for me. And that just means that this boot can't be dressed up as formally as if it had some nicer leather and it wasn't wrinkled so deeply. And I have a sneaking suspicion that that Chrome XL leather is the reason why these boots are so hot. They're great for super cold days, but they're not good for early fall or late spring. So they're more of a one season boot, not a three season boot, which I would prefer them to be. The next boot that I purchased, the Allen Edmonds Dalton Wingtip Dress Boot in dark chili. Now, I bought these boots in 2018, a couple of years after the Higgins Mill. So these have been with me for a while as well. Never resold or rehealed them, but as you could see, because they have that leather sole, I just put a cheap layer of rubber over here and I just cut it to size and sanded it to size. Definitely makes them a lot easier to wear if it's raining or if the weather take a turn for the worse. Likes about this boot. Well, it's a dark chili wingtip, which is my favorite color and my favorite design for dress shoes. Hands down, this is the most 
comfortable dress shoe or dress boot from Allen Edmonds or any other manufacturers that I've ever tried. I'm talking Rockport, I'm talking Cole Haan dress shoes, not hybrid shoes, I'm talking Clarks, I'm talking Echoes, I'm talking, I don't really know too many shoes except those couple of brands. This is by far the most comfortable boot that I've ever worn. A lot of that comfort comes down to that double leather sole. It is a butyl infused leather sole. That way it is a bit more weather resistant and that double sole just gives a nice natural cushioning and it also molds to your foot really nicely so these things i could walk forever in them no issues at all the heel is also a lot lower than the higgins mill so it doesn't heel strike as bad meaning my heels don't get as sore when wearing these as opposed to the higgins mill no speed hooks on top just means it is a very clean design you can definitely wear this all the way up to a pretty formal suit the only reason why you wouldn't be able to dress it super formally is because it is not black it is brown but if you got something like this in black you can pretty much go 99 percent of where a all black oxford could get you in other words if you have a couple of dress shoes that you don't wear because they're uncomfortable something like this can replace all of them that way you're going to have the same look of a dress shoe with that nice sleek toe box but you're going to get a super comfortable shoe you're not going to have to change into sneakers or you're not going to have to be thinking about if you get caught walking for a long time you're actually going to have your feet start to be hurting you or bothering you. They're also a calfskin leather, meaning that they don't get deep creases like the Chrome XL on the Higgins Mill. You could see these creases are almost non-existent. This is something that I really like, and this is what you get when you pay a lot more money for nicer leather dress shoes or boots. Just makes the boot look high quality, and it helps with the formality of the boot. They also fit a lot better when compared to my Allen Edmonds McAllisters on the 65 Blast. This one being a boot means that you can cinch it down nice and tight around your ankle, but you still have a lot more room up here, whereas the Oxford shoes with their closed lacing systems, it just gets pretty hard to cinch it down because you can start to get a lot of pain on the top of your foot, but then if it's too narrow up here, it's a lot harder to get a good fit with Oxford, whereas a boot can be a lot more forgiving. Dislikes about this boot, it's only a couple. First one, that pull tab right here, it is constantly getting caught on my jeans or any of the pants that I'm wearing and I'm constantly having to adjust it. I wish I could just cut it off or super glue it right there, crazy glue it. That way it doesn't get caught. I do use this loop when I'm putting the shoes on. However, the boots are so soft and broken in that I don't need the loop anymore. And while they do fit better than an Oxford from Allen Edmonds, they still run a bit narrow right here. I had to jam a shoe stretcher in here, which was not easy because the boot so high and I had to just put a little bit of a stretch up here definitely took care of all the discomforts I had but it would be nice if they just made them a little bit wider finally the worst dislike about this shoe is Alan Edmonds and their infinite wisdom decided to discontinue it I don't know why they did this because it's such an awesome boot but unfortunately that's the way life goes sometimes hopefully they'll bring it back someday or they'll come out with something much better that's not going to cost twice the price so if you have a pair of these wear them and enjoy them and if you don't can't get them anymore next up the Higgins Mill weatherproof boot from Allen Edmonds. I bought this boot back in 2019. I wanted to have something that was actually going to keep my feet dry, like guaranteed to keep my feet dry without having to go wear my pair of Echoes that I still have or my LL Bean boots that I was kind of tired of. Since I already had such a good experience with the standard non-waterproof Higgins Mills, these were pretty much a sure thing. Likes about this boot. Well, a lot of the things about the standard Higgins Mill do carry over with this boot. So the formality level is perfectly in the middle. They're not super big and bold bulky work boots that you can't dress up, but they're also not super dainty dress boots that start to look weird if you wear them with anything other than a suit. Color on these is also a bit of a slightly darker brown, a little bit less 3D, which some people don't like. I actually find that the darker brown color on these allows you to dress them up just a little bit more than the standard Higgins Mill. So I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but here's the standard Higgins Mill. Here's the waterproof one. The standard one does have a bit more of a characteristic to it, whereas the waterproof or whatever you want to call it, the weatherproof one just has a bit more of a one dimensional, a little bit more of a plain looking leather. Now you may prefer one look over the other. It's entirely personal preference. However, you can dress up the weatherproof ones just a little bit more. And of course they are weatherproof, meaning that if it's raining, if it's snowing, if the weather is really bad, you don't have to revert to wearing your bean boots or your waterproof hiking boots. You could still wear a very stylish boot that can be dressed up while keeping your feet super dry. Comfort on these boots is about the same as the standard ones, nine out of 10, but something that also sets these apart, and it doesn't make sense to me, however, it's just the way it is, 
these don't run as hot as the standard Higgins mill. And that may seem surprising to a lot of you. It was surprising to me as well, but I find that I can wear these earlier in the fall and I can wear them deeper into spring. I wore these in 65 degree weather. My feet did get a little bit warm. I could never ever wear the standard Higgins mills in anything above 50 degrees Fahrenheit since my feet would just overheat like crazy. So when it comes to seasonality and keeping your feet dry in inclement weather, the weatherproof version of the Higgins mill is the more versatile option than the standard Chrome XL version. Dislikes, well, number one, the leather seems to be of worse quality than the standard Higgins mill. Here is the standard Higgins mill. You could see it does have some wrinkles, but here is the weatherproof one. And it just seems like the weatherproof one wrinkles a little bit more. If we take a look at the side panel right there on the boot, the leather just wrinkles like crazy on these. Whereas in the standard Chrome XL boots, you don't get as crazy of wrinkling. That is my biggest complaint with the waterproof version. Next up. Thursday Captain in the Whiskey Storm King version. I purchased these boots about one year ago. I had a pair of standard black captains quite a while ago. There's a video that should pop up right now. I wore them in the snow. The traction was a bit lacking, but I just wanted to see if they actually could hold up to the snow. While those boots were great for a long time, the brown just got to be a bit too dark for my taste and the heel seemed to be really hurting me as I wore them more and more. So I eventually got rid of them. However, reading on the forums, watching some videos, it seems like Thursday is a company that actually listens to their customers and is constantly improving. And it sounded like they actually changed the boot last to be a bit wider in the toe box and added more cushioning around the entire foot, meaning that they wouldn't be as jarring on the heel. So I decided to give the Whiskey Storm Kings a shot. And since getting these, I wore them a whole bunch. I did a couple of days where I was walking eight to 10 miles. My heels felt great, my feet felt great. So it looks like Thursday actually did take care of all the discomfort issues that we were experiencing with their boots five, six years ago. Likes this boot. Well, the shape of it is absolutely beautiful. I really enjoy the color and something else I really like is that cap toe design. I mentioned the wingtip is my favorite, but the cap toe is a very close second. And sometimes I prefer the cap toe over a wingtip. I don't love the plain toe design, which is something I always was kind of wishing that I had with the Higgins mill. But overall, I just really enjoy the way the boot looks. That lugged outsole, while you can see that it's lugged, it's not super big and bulky like a pair of punk rock boots or a pair of hiking boots. And when compared to some other more workwear inspired boots like the Red Wing Iron Rangers, Red Wing Mock Toes Wolverine 1000 Miles, it is a lot slimmer and a lot sleeker, meaning you can dress this boot up a lot more than those other ones since it doesn't make you look like you have clown feet. Comfort is also great as well. They're not quite as comfortable as the Allen Edmonds Salt but they are significantly more comfortable than the Higgins Mill, so that is absolutely awesome. One of the biggest pros about Thursday boots are the cost to value ratio. They are $200 list price. You don't have to wait for a sale like you have to do with Allen Edmonds. You don't have to get factory seconds. They are $200 for one pair. Also, they have been $200 for one pair since their inception. They have not raised prices at all, whereas Allen Edmonds, the Higgins Mill, started at $350 eight years ago when they first came out. Now they're gonna cost $500. You have to wait for a sale to get them at $350. So as far as a company that actually cares about their customers, and cares about providing a good product at a good price, Thursday Boots definitely pulls ahead. Dislikes, they are still a bit heavy, which can just add to your fatigue if you're walking in them all day. And while the heel cushioning is better than the Higgins Mill, you could still sometimes get a sore heel if you are sensitive to that. My feet are very sensitive to shoes with no heel cushioning. I have to be really careful. Also, the quality of these is not as good as the Higgins Mill or the Dalton. They wrinkle a lot easier. They age a lot faster. And also, they probably aren't going to last more than a couple of years. And that's to be expected since you're paying 200 list price for these, whereas with the Allen Edmonds, you're paying 500. So you can buy two pairs of Thursdays and still have an extra hundred dollars in your pocket versus buying a pair of Allen Edmonds, just keep in mind that they are going to age faster and you're probably going to have to replace them a little bit sooner. And last, it would be nice if they had some sort of weatherproof membrane in there or if they made them with Gore-Tex or actually did some sort of modern day weatherproofing technology. I've worn these boots in the rain. I've worn them in the snow. My feet remain warm and dry. However, I did wear them in a monsoon during the spring season and I was outside for two or three hours and I'm talking it was pouring, pouring nonstop. When I got home and took these off. My socks did have quite a bit of wet spots on them. So if you're going to take these and stand in puddles or just wear them outside 
all day, every day in the rain, your feet most likely are going to get wet, water will seep through them. But if you're just looking for something that can survive a half an hour to an hour downpour, or if it's just drizzling outside and you gotta walk to the train and you don't wanna destroy some of your nicer shoes, these things will definitely hold up. Now onto my most recent purchase in my boot wardrobe, the Cole Haan Original Grand Waterproof Chucka boot. I've already had great experiences wearing the Cole Haan Original Grand Wingtips Low Cut Oxfords. They're derbies, but they call them Oxfords. But I wanted to see if they had any type of boots that were super comfortable and waterproof as well. And once I stumbled upon these, I decided to pull the trigger. Likes about this boot. Well, so far, the comfort is actually a little bit better than the Cole Haan Original Grand Standard Wingtip Oxfords. They do use something called flower foam, which I thought it was just some sort of a marketing gimmick. Like what is what does flower foam even mean? But it basically just means they use a higher quality, more cushioned rubber. And I could definitely feel the extra comfort when wearing these as compared to my older original Grand Wing tips. So if I wanna go out on a 10 mile walk, but I don't wanna wear a pair of sneakers, I wanna wear a pair of nice boots, it might rain. These are going to suffice my needs, no problem. I know my feet will not be bothering me at all. I kind of think of this like a waterproof, warm sneaker in a chukka boot style. Now, speaking of chukka boots, I also like the fact that they are chukka boots. This just means that you can actually wear them all seasons, even in the summer. You could even pull them off with shorts if you so choose. I used to do this back in the day when I had a pair of Clarks. I wouldn't do it anymore, but it's totally possible and something that you can't do with a higher boot that comes up higher on your ankle. And they're also gonna be great for the rain and snow in the colder months since that weatherproofing is going to keep your feet warm and dry. Dislikes about this shoe. Well, it being a chukka boot means it is much harder to get a good fit and a good cinch down around your ankle. Now, while I really like the seasonality and versatility of chukka boots, I always find that since it is so hard to get a cinch down up here and you only have two or three eyelets, it just leaves your foot floating around in here. And a lot of times, my foot in particular, can just get pushed up against the outside of the shoe, meaning it feels like the shoe is actually starting to pinch my small toe. And shortly after getting these shoes, that is something that I did find. I had to put my shoe stretcher in here and just stretch them out a bit more. They have continued to break in and stretch out, so this isn't much of an issue anymore. However, just beware if you're out there getting this pair of chukkas or any pair of chukkas, you may struggle to get a nice, comfortable, wide-fitting chukka that's not gonna feel like it's pinching your toes. While I do enjoy the color on these, I wish it was a little bit more of a darker brown, something like the dark chili color from Alan Edmonds. That would just make the boots a bit more versatile, a bit easier to wear in more formal situations. I'm also questioning the quality of the leather. Hopefully it doesn't wrinkle. As I've said, I don't like boots that wrinkle a whole bunch. I've already conditioned these once and I've shined them up a couple times. I also keep shoe trees in. So, so far, so good, but they are relatively new. I'm waiting to see how deep the wrinkles actually get after wearing them for a couple of months. Last but certainly not least, the Echo Track 25 Gore-Tex boot. Before buying these boots, my only true winter waterproof boot was the LL Bean boots. And that boot was not warm, it did not breathe well, and it was not very comfortable for long walks. So I just wanted something that had all those things, was warmer, more waterproof, more breathable, and was better for long walks. And those are actually my likes about this boot. It is warm, it is breathable, it is waterproof, and it is super comfortable. And now, although this is definitely the bulkiest, most casual boot in my wardrobe, again, when we compare it to boots like the Red Wing Iron Ranger, the Red Wing Mocto, even some of Wolverine's big bulky work boots. This boot is a lot slimmer and sleeker while offering superior comfort. Dislikes. Well, this boot is not designed with style. It's more function over fashion, 100% here. As you can see, this piece, this loop right here, the way the tongue sits, just the whole way the opening is, means that it is consistently difficult to get your pants to sit nicely over these boots, you have to put them over constantly every time or just deal with them always sitting on top and the extra fabric pooling over them. And although it is not a bulky work boot or bulky hiking boot, it is still a very casual hiking boot. So these really only look best with nice dark wash denim or some casual khaki chinos. You can't even wear them with some semi-formal pants. And now there are a lot of talks about the soles crumbling after a couple of years of these boots. Mine are still going strong, the soles are still great. However, every time I start to wear them again in the fall and winter, I'm always wondering if the soles are gonna start crumbling on me this year or if it's gonna happen next year or if it's ever gonna happen. So that's my current boot collection as of fall 2024. And what am I planning in the future? Well, I'm planning on actually getting rid of these standard Higgins Mill boots. These things have been absolutely amazing to me. I've had them for eight years. However, for the past couple of winters, I just haven't worn them since I started to wear the weatherproof ones. And now that I have the Thursday Captains, I just find that I greatly prefer one of these 
than something like the Higgins Mill. Uh, from then on, I'd have to see how much I'm actually wearing the waterproof version of the Higgins Mill. This is my least favorite boot out of all these other boots that are remaining, just because, like I said, we do have that insane creasing right here, and I don't really feel the need to wear this since I picked up the Thursday Captain, and the Thursday Captain is just better in every way for me right now than the Higgins Mill. But this is just me thinking ahead for right now, I'm gonna see how much I actually wear them for this fall and winter. A boot that I recently decided to pull the trigger on is the Allen Edmonds Landon Capto boot. And taking a look at the Landon Capto dress boot, it's almost a cross between the Thursday Captain Capto boot and the Dalton wingtip dress boot. And since the time of making this video, Allen Edmonds is having their annual sale, I am going to take advantage of the lower price. The Echo Track 25 Gore-Tex boot has been an awesome boot. This is like a waterproof sneaker however since I have something a bit nicer as a quote waterproof sneaker the Cole Haan original grand chucka boot maybe in time not this year but maybe in time I can get rid of the echoes and just rely on the Cole Hans when I need something that I'm actually gonna go out there play in the snow shovel snow or I need to rely on something that can keep my feet warm dry and super comfortable on those long wet winter walks so what would my advice be for you if you're out there doing some boot shopping this fall or this winter or whenever you feel like you need a new pair of boots? Well, first two things you gotta think of, what do you like the most and what is your primary purpose for these boots? Do you like black combat boots like some chunky Doc Martens? Look into black boots. Do you like sleek, dressy, clothes lacing boots that you wanna wear with suits and formal attire only? Look at things like the Allen Edmonds Hamilton boot. Look at things like some nicer dress boots from some other companies. Do you want a boot that just looks super rugged and you're only gonna wear with jeans, flannels, and leather jackets? Something like a Red Wing Mock Toe or a Red Wing Iron Ranger is going to do great with that since it's super casual but just super rugged and super high quality as well. Do you plan on spending a lot of time on your feet outside in these boots. Maybe something like the Thursday Captain is gonna be awesome for you. Want something that has a bit more of a sneaker feel but still is gonna keep you warm and dry? Something like the Cole Haan Original Grand Chucka boot might be for you. Want a boot that you can wear with jeans, chinos, business casual attire, and even some suits? Well then a dress boot like the Allen Edmonds Daltons if you can find them, or something like the Landon Capto dress boot from Allen Edmonds is gonna be a great option for you. And what about that Iron Ranger? A lot of people think that I hate the Iron Ranger. I actually don't hate the Iron Ranger. It just didn't work out for me and my feet. But just because my feet don't find that boot comfortable does not mean that you will find them uncomfortable as well. For example, my feet don't get bothered by wearing Vans, slip-ons, or old schools all day, where some other people can't even wear them for longer than a half an hour without their feet killing them. And the Iron Ranger is still a very high quality, very rugged, robust, workwear-inspired heritage boot. You're definitely gonna get what you pay for with that boot. They're gonna last you forever. You can start to dress it up to maybe business casual if you keep them shy but they really work a lot better with just rugged casual wear. Again, flannels, jeans, leather jackets. So just keep that in mind if you're actually looking at getting a pair of those Iron Rangers. Now if you're not sure, a good middle of the road starting point would be the Thursday boots. You don't have to necessarily get the Captain in this color. They have a whole bunch of different styles, a whole bunch of different colors. They have plain toes, they have mock toes, they have chuckas, they have dress boots. The Capto Captains and the Plain Toe Presidents are going to be a great value at $200 and you're also going to get a lot of versatility. Not to mention the comfort is going to be amazing according to me and according to a lot of other people that have worn Thursday boots extensively, meaning they're just going to be a great boot for you to start off with. And then as time goes on, you're going to see if you wear these boots in more casual or formal situations. That's going to give you a better idea for what you should buy in a second pair of boots. As always, thanks for watching.